Okay, welcome back. Um, we'll be continuing with the Art Committee series. Um, we'll be doing number four, Yohomni. And to help me again, he's Sensi Kerimo. I must remind you that um, there will not be textbook. Uh, these will have editions. So uh, please bear with us. Breakdown. Um, we'll be trying to concentrate on my distance, making sure we're within distance to actually make the technique effective. Not just doing it from a uh, fighting position, but maybe doing a kuriyashi or, yeah, just to gain that little bit of distance. So this is gonna go off as a tomakomazuki to get them to cover, but then we'll change it to the yurakan. So if we do it slowly, so I'm going to push forward and this is going to go looking as though it's going to come as a Tomokomazuki. But then as I do the Yumiyashi, it changes to Yurakan. Uh, if you want to, there's an additional move. As you're pulling this hand back, you are hooking, hooking to bring them down. Not an actual push, but just by just in your wrist after the Yurakan. Yeah, you can use this hook to pull the technique down. So one, as you're pulling hikitai back, stun the uraken, pulling it back and covering. And this isn't a gakazuki, but it's an uppercut, up underneath. Yeah, because I've been the pull down and because I've got this cancel in his body from coming back up again, I don't have to do a big reach. So I don't have to go uraken here, punch, over the top, look how exposed my ribs are. Yeah? So making sure you are, you've done the Urakan and pulling back. Now look how easy it is for me to, um, to take and to keep low. And here's a getty. Lift, I have this arm covering, pushing down. So all my weight is going down on this forearm. Yeah, I'm lifting, and instead of just going down, can you see this wedge? So Sensi Kerry, he could actually pop out and take my leg, yeah? So to prevent that, when you come down, think of Pina Nidan. So you come down in close. As soon as you touch, then turn. And this puts Sensi Kerry in a very, very, awkward position. Yeah? So once more. I'm going forward, a kuriyashi, tomokomazuki, and then I'm changing it to the uraken. I'm pulling down, I cover at the same time. Uppercut, over, pull, forward. Can you see I'm using this arm and my body weight? As soon as I touch, I use pinanidan into shikidachu kibidachi. As I go out, I try and leave this hand to last to prevent the uh, return attack. One thing to where you're trying to strike, and so it affects two people, one with the actual uchi the strike for the uraka, and also the uki, where he puts his arm. If he doesn't pull it back fully, yeah? Then when it goes through, it can actually, you can still hit the side of the head or even right the way through to the back of the head. Yeah, so make sure that when 
the uki does the defense. They come right the way around so that you can't hit the side of the head or the back of the head. So safe, make sure it's safety for, for these guys. Yeah? Okay, so when you're practicing, um, be very attentive of, of this elbow. So I've seen, I've experienced it myself when I was first learning this many years ago. Uh, you know, own up, who hasn't done that? Yeah? Hit your thigh on their elbow. And then you're off training for a couple of weeks. Yeah, so if you move the person, so they're moving this way slightly, their elbow, because their natural reaction is to, 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 to stretch out with their arms and indirectly move their elbow out the way. So out, and then instead of just coming straight up with your uh, hizagedi, you can almost do a, a moishigedi hiza, and then carry on. Next thing is, your uki cannot protect his neck from this position. So even though you would be striking to the back of the neck, be very, very careful. You either do it very controlled, yeah, or go for the slide to the back or the scapula, yeah, but be careful of the spine and be careful of the neck especially. So, you know, you want to be able to train with him, not put him into hospital. Okay, so be, be safety conscious with these. Okay. Shh. So there's a, a few points to discuss with this that apply not only to this technique, but training in general. Uh, I was doing a little bit of research on uh, the OEO series so that we can have a look at uh, what's, what's going on and look at various points. Uh, and as well as uh, OEO, I've seen in, in other pairs where, where people give up their stances uh, you see people who are making an attack, but because they get blocked, they let the knees collapse. You've now given up everything. You've not only had your technique blocked, but you've given up your stance. And it's the same with this. Although you're only covering and trying to get your hand around the back of your neck to protect the back of your neck, I've seen people who turn into Kibadachi. Well, you've given up your stance, you've given up any sort of defence, you have. So you're trying to encourage Tory to have to work at the techniques. If you give up your stance, you're not really helping them and you're certainly not helping yourself. So you should have a mindset of, okay, I'm allowing these techniques to be practised on me, but I want to make sure I'm as defensively strong as I can be. And if you get to the technique of sensei mentioned, where you pull the elbow out of the way, pulls you out of your centre so your arm moves to create the space, brilliant. He's learning, you're learning. But if you're giving up your stance for them, 
neither of you are learning a lot. So sort of points to take away is get the hand round, cover the back of the neck, but also think of your stance, think of your defence, and if you're in this position, you should be thinking about, well, where can I counter-attack? You know, you might be standing there and allow them to practice on you, but you also have a mind on what you could do to get out of this situation. Um, and in the sense I mentioned with the elbow, clear the space, get you out of your centre. So, you know, if you think that your partner's, he's going to hit you in the elbow and injure the leg, you might help them out and move your arm. But that's not a long-term solution. They need to learn to get you out of your centre and clear their own space. So you might do a couple and move your arm, but eventually you might say, look, you need to do something to clear the space because I can't keep doing this for you, otherwise they're not learning. So these little things where, especially if you've got a partner you're trying with all the time, you want to both be able to develop. So this is a good way, start off simple, help them out, but then eventually long term, they're going to have to work it out for themselves with your encouragement and help. So some things to be wary of. Um, try not just do the Iraq and to the side of the face. Yeah, try and go around to the back of the head. If they start backing off too much, then at least you'll, you'll hit the side of the face. That's if they're not covering. Yeah. Uh, other thing is, you're starting now not to pull his fist back as you're stepping forward or pushing forward. So you'll need that for when you do your attacks for your, um, for your uh, kions. Yeah, don't pull them back to go forward. So even though you're going forward, make sure that this fist is going forward and not coming back to then attack again. Yeah, try and use your hip. So you're introducing one and two hands together. So, yeah, you're doing the strike and the cover. So you're doing def uh, attack and defense at the same time, even though it being on two different, two different arms. Yeah? And use your hip. Hip. Yeah? Make sure you pull them down. Not having to reach up. Especially if you're somebody of my size. Last thing you want to do is start trying to reach over a tall person to grab them. So try and use your, try and use your techniques to line up the next. It's, a, it's like a good um, snooker player. There will be three or four shots ahead. Yeah, they, they think three or four shots, not just do one and go, great, that's gone down the pocket, now which one have I got to look for? They've actually lined up the next one. So try and make sure that you have lined up your next technique. So you're not thinking about each one. You know the pattern that you're going to go through. So you try and need to be in that position for the next technique. And not just finish, but line yourself up again for the next technique and the next technique.